So, really quickly then, those receptors that are feeding back into the brain, if we're always using just one side of the receptors, and we're just stimulating those that side, then we may get to a point where we don't create a balance, and that imbalance then creates the loss of plasticity, the two sides. And I start to feel dizzy just by turning one side to the other. Does that make you feel uncomfortable? Why not make it if you spin the whole time? <laughs> yes, you see that? So, so actually we might have to use you as an example for that. Go ahead. Is that especially important after concussion? Especially after, after a traumatic brain injury, we always want to rehabilitate the brain. And the vestibular system is one of the most sensitive. Why is that? Let's actually look then a little bit further. Here along with the brain, of course, are the ears. The ears within the external auditory meatus enters then what we call cranial nerve 8 and there's, there are three little canals. Let's actually make this a little bigger. There are three horizontal, or excuse me, not horizontal, there are three canals that are oriented in such a space or region in the brain that in essence we have a perception with the eyes closed of where our head is in position to space or gravity, okay? And within this vestibular system, this is the vestibule, right? Which is like a, a, a horizontal, an anterior, and a posterior canal. So there are these canals in there that are oriented in space such that then when we move our heads in certain directions, it activates certain areas, okay? So let me just show you quickly. The horizontal canal, as I turn my head to mirror you to the right, I'm activating the right horizontal canal. And the fluid in that canal is actually activated and perceives then motion. Okay? As I move my head to the right, your right, my eyes, you see, will actually go forward, right? They go opposite. So the eyes actually move in conjugate with that canal and it's orientation. As I move my head back and to the right, my eyes go down and to the left, okay? They stay forward. As I move my head then horizontally back and to the left, and then the other position is forward and my eyes go up and to the right, okay? So those are actually the movements, the cerebellar or vestibular movements of the eyes associated with this vestibular canal system. Right? Now what can happen when I have what's called benign paroxysmal positional vertigo? Or what happens if I lie down and I feel like all of a sudden the room is spinning around me? Bless you. Oftentimes what is said is within these little canals there are little hair cells and the fluid as it goes a certain way causes those cells to bend a certain way. Okay? What can happen though is some people describe it as what's called an otolith, okay? What is a lith? You've heard of lithotripsy associated with kidney stones, right? So lithotripsy or a lith is a stone. So some researchers say that there are such things as little ear stones, if you will. Little calcium stones that can actually get lodged and give the perception when I tip my head a certain way and all of a sudden it will activate one of these little stones and keep that hair cell bending so the perception is that I keep moving in that position. Okay, So one of the tests that we do to test for this is called Epley's maneuver. Okay, I'm not exactly certain on that spelling, Epley's. EY. EY, thank you. Boy, my poor markers have been used this week again. Uh, Epley's maneuver. Okay, so Epley's is where you actually take the person, you have them sitting up on a table or on a bed, our exam tables. What we do is hold their head and we lay them back quickly while the head is turned 30 degrees to one side and then tip beyond horizontal. This is what it looks like. The person is sitting. We lie them back quickly and their head is tipped beyond the edge of the table 
and then their eyes are going to be looking, or they're going to turn their head that direction, okay? What we're looking for is what's called a nystagmus. Have you ever seen nystagmus? Do you know what nystagmus is? Nystagmus is a condition where the eyes will start to dart quickly, okay? So what you'll see is the eyes will pursue and then go across, pursue and go across, pursue and go across. We can actually mimic a nystagmus. If you watch my eyes just as I move my fingers across my in front of my face, just watch my eyes what they do. Can you see how they go do 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 do? And they just go across quickly like that. Did you see that? Watch again closely. Can you see that? Can you pick it up? So what you're looking for is that nystagmus. That's actually what we call a visual pursuit or a saccade. That's normal. But a nystagmus is when the eyes on their own will start to slow beat, fast beat back, slow, fast beat back, slow, fast beat back. And when you see that, bless you, that's associated with positional vertigos or maybe a central lesion or some type of a concussion, something of that nature. So what you're looking for is the beat or beating of the eyes, okay? Now, if the beating of the eyes is left and right or side to side, because in this class tonight, it's really going to be way beyond our, our need to know, all right? But if you're looking side to side, it's most commonly something associated with the, uh, the labyrinthine or the vestibular system. If it is going up and down, it's more often associated with the brain stem and this area of the brain, okay? So that's where you have the person who's had the stroke when they can't speak very well and they have this guard feet of not they're saying, okay, if you have somebody who suddenly starts to do that and their eyes start to <coughs> flutter up and down, take them to the emergency room, right? If their eyes are going around in a circle, that has often to do with a medication or peripheral type of an nystagmus as well. So what you're looking for is the inability for them to control their eyes. Now sometimes you'll actually see a child where they'll have one eye will actually do that type of a nystagmus. And those kids are often the child that will have the esophoria or their eye will be kicked out or the, the wall-eyed position. And they're trying to cover that up so they'll actually try to focus with one eye and look at you but the other one will be pulling out and they'll be trying to pull it in so they'll sit there and shake their head or move with that. Right? Imagine trying to read a book when your eyes are doing that. There's a young man that came to us and in his case he was, uh, how old is he now? Uh, 11 year old boy who came to us and in his case when he would try to look he'd have to hold things up close to try to force the one eye to be able to look the other was doing its dance the really neat thing though with him is we could actually find that when we activated one of the canals we could actually bring both eyes into focus and he could actually read with both eyes once he put his eyes into that correct position to create dominance in that vestibular system to calm it down okay so there are things that can be done. That's kind of, again, the take home of that, please. Someone who's been extremely ill, uh -huh. and they've had many, many drugs, and so the walls look like kaleidoscopes. Mm -hmm. Everything's just, is that from the drugs? Or? So the question right now is, can medications cause a change in the eyes or the oculomotor response as well as then create some type of a change in perception in the brain, like a kaleidoscope appearance, um, sometimes again the, the nystagmus, um, the rotating nystagmus. Yes, the answer is because the medications can affect those areas of the brain. And the barbiturates are the worst family of that. Okay, so some of the pain meds. Here's the other thing with this. When we look at a brain that has had a fever, have you ever met someone who has lost their um, hearing after they've had a fever? Did you ever, are you ever acquainted with someone that's had that? It's, it's more common than you think, okay? Fevers can actually affect that vestibular system. Um, so can viruses. If we look at viruses, viruses very commonly will affect the ears. In fact, most ear infections are caused by viruses. And those viruses actually affect that vestibular cochlear nerve, the vestibular portion of cranial nerve 8, okay, or the balance portion of it. So as we look at this then, coming back to this type of a presentation, we have to look at the canal system, the eye position, 
the head position, which is positions in the canals that are associated with this balance system, and then be able to determine if this nystagmus is something that's treatable or not. Okay? Because the nystagmus, if when we tip the head back and the eyes are going down, if the beat is downward going, that more often has to do with a loss of adequate blood supply in the neck to the brain. Okay? And that's why they actually do Epley's maneuver. It's a rotation with the head tipped because you're actually looking for a, a compromise of the carotid arteries in the neck to the brain. Okay? And then what's called the, excuse me, the, the uh, vertebral basilar artery is what we're looking at more specifically. So it's circulation. All right? so